An open roundabout is one where you can see clearly to the right on the approach, especially around 15 or 25 meters from the yield line. A closed or a blind roundabout is one where you cannot see clearly to the right on your approach, as you're probably going to be blinded or blocked by a wall, parked cars, or other obstruction. You need to be able to tell the difference between these two types of roundabouts and be more cautious on your approach to a blind one, especially when the distance between where you are and the right is quite small, as you can see here. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video, how to manage and handle a blind or a closed roundabout. If you like the sound of this video and you like the information I'm sharing with you, then don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you want to show your appreciation for all these free videos, then consider making a voluntary donation by PayPal if you wish. Links will be in the description and in the first pinned comment, and I thank you in advance. Before I go any further, I want to mention this video I made here. Um, I made it about a couple of months ago, maybe eight or nine months ago. It's on tricky junctions, how to handle tricky junctions. And in that video, I will be talking about blind junctions and blind roundabouts, and also how to do clutch control and how to do junctions in first gear, where you go to first gear from second gear and, and how to do that in a way that is safe, um, smooth and practical. So the information in that video is really going to complement this video. So make sure you check that out after this one. Now let's have a look at some photos I took over the last few days, and I'm going to explain how you can handle a roundabout that's more open and how you could handle one that's more blind. So here they are. So in this first photo here, I'm about 15 meters from the yield line. And this is kind of the area where I like to call it um, decision time. So you have to make the decision, am I going to go? Am I going to go slowly or am I going to stop? So if we have a look at this roundabout to the right here, you'll see that it's kind of open. I can see the equivalent of one, two, three cars, as in enough space for one, two, three cars. Um, but the gates and the poles here are a little bit off-putting. So I need to be aware of that. And this is why you would always give like lots of quick looks and don't stare the one way too long because sometimes we could get a kind of a optical illusion or we might misjudge something there. Uh, on this roundabout, second gear should be okay to do it in if it's safe and if it's clear. But remember, watch out for the traffic coming from straight ahead as well because sometimes if they're moving a bit faster than you and if they're further advanced than you, they could be on the right fairly quickly. But uh, in summary, this roundabout should be okay to complete in second gear once it's safe to do so. So same roundabout, but the exit to the left in a clockwise direction, if you know what I mean. Now in this situation, I'm about 25, maybe 30 meters from the line. Now I can see okay from straight ahead, as in the 12 o'clock direction, but I am a little bit blind on the right. Now, as I get closer, this photo is about 15, maybe 18 meters from the yield line and again you're kind of getting into decision time here like should i go should i stop should i edge uh, now i have a good view here i have a good view at 12 o'clock as i said and i have a reasonable view on the right um because i could probably see the equivalent of three or four cars on the right so the verdict there here is go in second gear once it's safe and once it's clear because it is fairly open and it seems fairly safe so same roundabout again, but a different exit. And here I am about 15 meters from the line, give or take. Again, it's decision time. Now it does seem okay on the right here, as you'll see yourself. Um, there is a fence there, but thankfully it's a see-through fence, so I can see through it and I'm not blocked um, excessively here. But again, there are a few poles in the way and that does make it a little bit tricky, which is why we have to give lots of quick looks and not just one or two looks as you approach the roundabout. So it should be okay to go in second gear here if it's safe, but be careful, double check as always. And just, you might not see this here, but I, I know from photo photographing this roundabout, I'm on a slight uphill here and the other traffic coming from straight and coming from the right are on 
um, downhills. So they're going to pick up more momentum and I might be a little bit slower on the approach and on the takeoff. So just bear in mind that the gravity there could be a factor as well. But in summary, once it's safe here, this roundabout should be done in the second gear if it's safe to do so. Same roundabout, different exit. So this looks a little bit more blind from this side. As I approach this roundabout here, I should already at this stage be considering doing it in first gear because I just can't really see very much on the right. I'm blinded by the, by the corner there, by the wall. So I need to either do this in first gear or possibly do it in second gear, but a very, very slow second gear, like as slow as the car can manage. And then if I feel the car is about to struggle or chug a little bit, I should pop it into first gear then. Now here at this point, I'm about seven meters, seven or eight meters, give or take from the, from the line here. I can't really see much on the right here. Maybe the equivalent of one car is all I can see at this particular moment in time. Plus, I also have to be aware of what's coming from 12 o'clock because they can be a factor as well, especially if they're slightly faster and they're slightly more advanced in terms of their position on the roundabout. The signs in the middle of the roundabout here are slightly blocking my view. Um, but because the cars have their lights on, it means that it's easier for me to notice these cars, especially if they're dark cars and if there's a dark background. As you can see here, one car is dark and there is a dark background there because of the trees. So because they have their lights on, it certainly helps other drivers. And this is why you should always use your dipped headlights when driving. So other drivers, such as more inexperienced learners, for example, can see you at these types of roundabouts. It's okay for experienced drivers. They'll probably spot you quicker, but for learner drivers, Having your lights on means that the learners are going to notice you a bit quicker and a bit easier. So the same roundabout again here, uh, same roundabout, same exit, just a couple of seconds later. Now here I can only see one car on the right here, just the one. And at this particular moment in time, I'm blinded at 12 o'clock because the car is coming up. He's halfway through with the exit there and he's just finishing his turn. So I'm completely blinded momentarily. So definitely here, the best thing is for me to roll into first gear, uh, just into first gear, just come nice and easy off the clutch and just edge up nice and slowly and gently to allow me to observe and judge any traffic on the roundabout and any traffic to the right. Again, the same roundabout again, same exit. And again, I'm a little bit closer to the line. Now I can see a little bit more on the right here, but only a maximum of two cars, I would say here on the right. And I have to be literally at the line to be able to see two cars. So that shows how blind and tricky this roundabout is. I also need to be aware of the black and the red car here as well, as I'm I can see them, but they're slightly blocked by the signs in the middle of the roundabout. And as I said earlier in the video, this is why you don't stare to the right at roundabouts, because if you do, you'll have a good view to the right, but you might miss something important from the 12 o'clock or the one o'clock direction. I'm definitely rolling into first gear here and yielding to the right. And of course, yielding to anybody already on the roundabout, because doing this roundabout slowly in first gear is the safest and most practical thing to do. Different roundabout here. Um, let's have a look. So in this photo, you'll see I'm about 45, maybe 50 meters from the line. So I'm already a good distance from the line and I can see there's a queue of cars up ahead. And even at this early stage, I can see that it's blind because we've got a building there, which is actually a pub, literally beside the roundabout on the corner. So it's, I, I can see at this early stage, it's very blind. So already I'm thinking either a very, very slow second gear here or more likely first gear. Next photo here now, I'm about 35, 37 meters from the line of the roundabout. And again, it's still very blind on the right. So I'm planning ahead. I'm anticipating how blind this roundabout is going to be. Our third photo on this roundabout, I'm getting a little bit closer as you can see, about 15, maybe 16 meters from the line. Now I haven't got a bad view straight ahead. I can see fairly okay straight. So I'm always conscious of cars coming from straight as well because they could 
come across my way as well but still quite blind on the right and i'm definitely thinking at this stage because around 15 16 17 meters from the line here it's kind of decision time you need to be kind of deciding am i going to stop or am i going to go to first gear or whatever so i'm definitely thinking first gear here uh just pop it into first gear maybe maybe go very slow to give myself more time and control at this roundabout next photo same roundabout I've gone from being about 15 meters to maybe eight or 10 meters from the line. On the right, I can see pretty much the equivalent of one car. That's all because the pub, the building there is blinding my view of anything else that might be behind that car. So it's very, very blind. So this roundabout is busy. It's also slightly uphill and it's blind. So if you think of those three things, busy, slightly uphill and definitely blind, that's all the more reason to do the roundabout in first gear because if it's on a slight uphill it's probably more likely to struggle in second gear anyway so it clearly makes more sense and is more practical to do it in first gear for more time and control this photo here is taken practically at the line maybe i'm about a meter maybe half a meter from the line but it's more or less at the line and it's only now i can see two plus cars here on the right um, at this roundabout but I have to be practically at the line to do that. It's clearly a very blind roundabout. The best option is to do it in first gear. So I should go into first gear, clutch control my way up a little bit, lean forward, creep out, keep the head moving, don't stare the one way too long, make sure it's safe to go, and if it is, keep going. But if I have to stop, fair enough, I'll stop, reapply the handbrake, get the bite when I want to creep forward or get the bite when I want to go depending on how busy it is and what the volume of traffic is like um, but when when I'm stopped make sure my feet are ready so if you if you're stopped handbrake up because it is on a slight uphill then the right foot should not be on the brake it should be ready over the accelerator so I'm ready to either get my bite and creep or I'm ready to get my bite and go but anyway in summary this roundabout needs to be done in first gear I need to keep the head moving creep forward if needs be and be watching for any cars already on the roundabout and of course anybody already on the right. All roundabouts are unique. You need to individualize each roundabout that you face as a driver because some will be open and reasonably easy and straightforward to do while others will be more blind and closed and you may have to slow down more and creep out. There's no one size fits all um, answer to doing roundabouts. You have to treat them each individually based on how open or how blind they are. And don't forget to check out that video I mentioned at the start about tricky junctions because that's really going to complement this video very well and the information in that will be very, very relevant to you. So check that out, links in the description and in the first pinned comment. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be back very soon with another live stream and lots more videos over the summer. Um, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and I will see you very, very soon.